Okay, does anyone have any challenge on how to make use of the Zoom software? Of course, it has been integrated into your school's website and uh, you know that it's going to help you reach your students, your teachers, you can engage them physically, you can share screen, you can chat with them, you can see all of them. So I believe you must have been put through on what to do. So I'll just give you an example. Can you hear me? Who is in that noisy place? If, for example, I've prepared my lecture in PowerPoints, I'll come to this place where you see share screen. I will see or I'll see my entire screen. So let's assume I want to share this PowerPoint presentation and this is my lecture. I'll share it. Once I share it, you start seeing the screen. I hope everybody is seeing my screen now. Can you all see my screen? You can see my screen, isn't it? Then I'll start my presentation. Can you see my can you see my presentation on your screens? You can see it, isn't it? Uh -huh. So I'll be talking and talking and talking, teaching my students, explaining my points, explaining my points. When I'm done, I'll go to the top and I'll see stop share. I'll stop sharing. It will come back to me again. If there is any student I want to send a message, I'll go to chat. I'll see all my students. If I have a message for everybody, I will type a message for everyone. If it is for a particular person, if I want to send to Mrs. Esther or Alalibo, I'll send to Alalibo. If I want to send to Techno, that is uh, Mrs. Harry, I'll send her a message. If it's for everybody, I'm going to select for everybody. I'm going to say everyone. So let you, you guys are going to see a message. Okay. Okay, but she can hear us now. But her all oh, okay, beautiful. So you see that I've sent a message and I believe all of you can see it. Who can tell me a message I sent now? Beautiful. So your, your students can reply. If they have a question, they can reply via that chat, as the case may be. Then, if I want to share a white screen, I'll also, I have this white board here. I have a white board. I'll share this white board. It will bring me to a whiteboard where I can actually type. Yes, the letters will come up. Anything I want to do on this screen, I will do on the screen. Uh, welcome to my class uh, and stuff like that. When I'm done, I will stop share. It will bring me back. So the best thing you need to do in using Zoom is that the lectures must have been prepared maybe in PowerPoint or in Microsoft Word, but best in PowerPoint so that it will be very easy once you're sharing your screen, you click on your presentation and share that presentation. And then you start with your presentation. The student will easily understand it where you have a presentation like this. And then you are just explaining, 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 explaining. As you are talking to them, they can see what you are doing. When you are done, you stop. The lectures may also be recorded if you want to record your lecture. But it's just going to consume maybe additional space on your system. So these are the major things you do. The, the, the advantage of connecting through your school's website is that parents will begin to see value in what you are offering. Let me also show you something from your school's website. Can you see me? Let me, also, let me show you something. Okay, somebody else is sharing screen. Esther is sharing screen. Okay. Esther, please, can you 
Can you stop share? I want to show you something on your on your on your school's website. Yeah. You just go, you see where they write stop share. Have you have you seen it? Have you seen it? You will see stop share. Just, are you using a phone or a laptop? Okay, beautiful. So let me share something. Let me say I want to show somebody something. On your school's website. So I'm sharing. I'm sharing my browser now. Can you see your school's website? Uh, so at the at the top also you see something like e-learning here. This one is just an additional platform where children can go. If it opens, you are going to see this platform. Class by class, you see pre-K, kindergarten, first grade, second grade. This one is just for students to play with. Very, let's say a student is in kindergarten or is in grade one. Let me click on click kindergarten. It has grade one to twelve. That is from primary one to SS3. You see various topics will start showing up. Are you seeing it? Can you? Yes, yeah, so you see identify numbers. The child can click on this particular topic. If he clicks on this particular topic, he is going to see um, a test, a kind of a, a, a game, a game-like thing. Like here it says, pick every three. He picks this, picks this, and says submit. Excellent. The next one will come, pick every two. Correct. So if he picks the wrong answer, for example, now, the thing will tell him, sorry, incorrect. I give him an explanation of why he is not correct. And, you know, the correct answer number is one, as the case may be. So every class on your website has a kind of topic by topic illustration of what they can do. If he is in kindergarten or grade one or grade two, he will see topics according to his classes. Just at the top. Let's say let's say he's on second grade. You click on second grade. That is that is second grade is primary two, isn't it? You see topics with respect to second grade. So any topic you click at the top here you will also see maths, language, arts, science, social studies as the case may be. So whichever subject the child may want to attempt, the child will just keep attempting. We do all this so that we'll be able to engage the students during this period of lockdown and even beyond the lockdown. And also um, um, make our school relevant to parents in a time like this. So that's the whole importance of it. There are so many other things that are inside the school's website. Maybe when you log into your school's website, you're going to see teachers might even record their videos and upload it inside the school's website so that students can watch at their own time. Then also, um, you can upload your lectures. You can give them assignments from your school's website. I know I've been sharing some of those videos to the proprietors, giving students assignments, giving them tests from the school's website. Let me just log into your school's website and show you something. Okay. So, but I, I believe you have seen what I'm talking about. So, let me assume if I log into your school's website, just a minute, let me just show you. If I log into your school's website, if I come to assessment manager, let's say for basic or for secondary, anyone, I'm going to see where I'll be able to set assignments, either objective or theory. So students in their own end, when they log in, they will see the assignment and they can answer it. You as the teacher that gave the assignment, you will see the score of every child. The child will also see the result of his assignment that he has just done. You can set objective, you can set CBT assignment, you can set essay assignment as the case may be. So you can ask question now before the time elapses. Yes, ma'am. Good morning. Yes. Yes. Yes, ma'am. 
Exactly. It's going to be ob objective. You know, in objective, when you are uploading it, whenever you want to set the question, you can let me know. I'll, I'll show you. I'll give you a format. You type question option A, option B to E, then you type the correct answer. So when the student is answering it, all the options will show. Anyone he clicks, the system will use it and check whether it is in line with the answer that was submitted. Uh, if it's correct, the system will mark it for him. So at the end of the day, he will see his score, just the way you have in JAM CBT. And I know that in your school, you know if you have students who are preparing for JAM, we have over, we have over 5,000 questions for your students who are preparing for JAM. They can go there, they will see CBT, JAM CBT. They can use it to practice again and again and again. And they can get used to it. Yes. Yeah. Good day, yes. 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 There's a video, there's a video we did and we sent it to the proprietors how you can set up a meeting. I think I'll send that video to Mr. to Mr. Yebuchi so that he will he will use it and share with us. He'll just send you a link. The video is on YouTube. We created the video to guide people who will, who may want to host. So I'll share the link to him. He'll share the link with you guys. And they'll be able to set up a meeting from there. Okay, I think that for now that's all. Other things, other things we'll be doing. We're going to be as we as we update. We're going to be sending you the videos of what, how to take every step you need to take. So it will be easy for us over the period. So, but you just have to be engaging your students or your parents and make them know that you are not just redundant because education in the next few years is going to go borderless. So, and our our school cannot be left behind. You understand? And so. Advice to, advice to some advice to some people is that the future the future is here the future is here you heard that you heard that crude oil is now selling for less than a dollar meaning that in the next few years oil is going to lose relevance so education and technology is going to be the way forward and it's unfortunate that Nigeria we lost it in America all over the world, if you check on Google, the 10 most capitalized companies are technology companies. So our, our schools must be technologically uh, uh, inclined so that we can produce students who are tech, techy. Oh.